Yeah, I'm happy to be here. It's uh, our third year here at the AW in the US, and um, I'm happy to talk about a topic which, um, yeah, um, started in the beginning and um, is actually now something we, we can finally tackle. Um, first of all, I, I want to give a quick introduction to, um, yeah, who is Hololight, for those of you who, who don't know us. Um, we are a, a company um, which was founded in 2015. We're located in Munich and in Innsbruck, so that is in Germany and in Austria. And we are now 30 people um, working there, um, mainly focusing on industrial augmented reality solutions. Um, but we have also uh, two products at the moment, which we showcase at our booth here um, and which we, which we sell. The first one is a 3D CAD visualization tool, mainly for engineers um, in the automotive industry. Um, and the second one is an input device for augmented reality. Um, because we wanted to get rid of gestures, controllers, and all this stuff, and wanted to be more precise, and that's why we offered um, our Holo Stylus. Um, the topic I want to uh, talk about today, um, you heard it in the, in the title, remote rendering, um, is based on a few things that we experienced in the past. And I want to show you one case study, um, or actually two case studies, in which we identified a specific problem. The first one here is a project with Festo, that's a German um, company, uh, 20,000 employees. Um, they are located uh, close to Stuttgart, and they produce pneumatic cylinders, um, so a classic manufacturing company. Um, we had a project in which we uh, wanted to improve um, the training of new employees in the production, and um, we did this. We did an application on Microsoft HoloLens, uh, which helped them to learn step by step how they could um, assembly a pneumatic cylinder. Um, but we had one big problem when we did this, um, this um, project, and one reason also why it was difficult to follow on and to do finally a, a rollout. Okay. Yes, and um, this is um, actually that these machines that we visualized, the machine you can see here on the right. Um, the 3D CAD data that was existing was very bad. It was too big, too many polygons to be visualized on a local device like a HoloLens, and so we had huge efforts in optimizing this hologram just to uh, make this use case possible. Um, and this is not the only case. So there's another one. There's a company called NG. Um, it's actually uh, bigger than, than most people would, would think. Um, it's a French electric utility company um, with uh, yeah, 65 billion revenue. And here we work together with NG Refrigeration. Um, they produce refrigeration facilities. So these machines, which you can see on the right. And uh, what they wanted to do is actually, they wanted to visualize their refrigeration facilities um, for engineering purposes and uh, for planning. So they have their 3D CAD models, um, which had actually not a bad quality. But obviously, such a machine is very big. so. Um, the main issue that they had when they wanted to visualize these um, objects on smart glasses and smartphones was that the 3D CAD models had between 20 and 50 million polygons. Um, the HoloLens, for example, can visualize something like maybe 800,000 polygons, and then it has a high frame rate. If you go more, it crashes completely or it's very unstable. So as you can see, these are problems uh, which, which uh, are really out there in the industry and uh, which on a project base, many companies also here in, at this show have, and, uh, and also we had this. Um, I want to talk a bit about our product because this is closely related to, um, to the last um, case study. Our hollow view in the end is um, a workspace for engineers. So it allows you to upload your 3D CAD models, um, several classic file formats which are used in the industry. Um, so you can upload your files directly on devices like a HoloLens. Um, you're able to manipulate them, so you can slice through them. Um, you, can, you can really work with them. Uh, I'll show you a video um, to, to get a better understanding of it. Maybe just, uh, can you turn down the volume just a little bit in case it's too loud? And I'll quickly show you how this works. So there, there's an upload process. Um, you do basically do that from your computer. And uh, there you go, you have your file on your device, and you can take it, do a multi-user session. Uh, you can do that in a sales scenario, also in an engineering scenario, when you discuss about a, about a design. Um, 
The interaction methods, they were very, pretty cool, and also the company, NG, which you saw before, used this tool. Um, but what they had to do was actually, they had to reduce their files to, to, to actually enable this, the things you can see here. And uh, it's, it's very nice if you can work with a file, um, if you can really work with individual parts, but um, what you really want is that you want to have an object with a high quality. You want to have a high quality experience in AR if you work with such things. Because I don't see a benefit in visualiz visualizing something in AR if the quality of the design is pretty bad. And so the situation we had in the end was that so many developers out there and so many companies had the problem that they had to reduce polygons, they had to invest time and efforts in doing so, um, they had the problem that once they made a change, they had to the same process again, and, and this was very annoying. And we said, hey, come on, um, how can I visualize a 3D CAD model without reducing it? Why should I take efforts in reducing my stuff that I already have? It doesn't make sense. Um, and so we were looking for a way of, 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 of how can we do that. Um, basically, the restriction and the problem that we have is that the computing and the graphic power of local devices is not high enough. Um, and even if a new HoloLens comes out, and even if a HoloLens 5 comes out, it will probably have not uh, the computing power to visualize a, a file with 20 to 50 million polygons. And uh, so we needed to, to take another approach, and uh, now we come back to the, to the title of this presentation. Uh, we decided to, to work with remote rendering. So if um, a hardware is not powerful enough to display good AR content, why not taking hardware which is able to do so? Um, there are so many servers out there. There's the cloud out, the, um, out there, servers you can use. There is maybe your, your gaming MacBook or whatever um, you can use. And uh, we said, okay, why don't we not take this computing power, um, render everything there, and then we stream it to all these devices out there we stream it to um, a smartphone, we stream it to a smart glasses, and um, then you're not limited to 800,000 polygons. You can do way more. In the end, you're dependent on the, on the capabilities of your server, but um, that's a big advantage. And we said, okay, that's the way to go. That's what we need to offer in our HoloView product, but also in general. Um, what we provide in the end is a framework which allows you to visualize high quality 3D content. Um, but this has to be done in real time and with low latency. Because I'm, I'm working in a 3D environment, in a, in a HoloLens, I cannot just turn around and wait for, for 20 seconds until it renders again. So I need that in real time, I need it in low latency. And, and that was very important for us. Um, what is also very important, and that's a difference to, to some of the solutions out there, is um, our customers, especially in this 3D CAD environment, they, they don't take their 3D files to the cloud. Um, they usually work with confidential files, with research files, with customer files, and they will not take it to the cloud. That's, it's just, in Germany at least, that's a fact. Even if the cloud gets, uh, gets better in the next 10 years, this will not happen. Um, and so we were looking for a way to do this um, with industrial acceptance, um, and that means on-premise. So we use the servers of a company they already have, they trust in, and that's very important. Um, the next thing is that um, if you choose that approach, you have the big benefit that uh, you can allow a cross-platform streaming because you don't have to create um, an app for HoloLens, an app for an iPhone. You create, in, uh, in the end, an application which runs on a server and can be streamed on several devices. What varies is the interaction method. So sometimes you use gestures maybe, sometimes uh, you use a controller. That can vary, but in the end, um, we stream the whole and the entire application. It's a bit like, like, like Netflix, um, the, the concept is very similar. Um, another big benefit is that you can centralize your AR apps. Um, that's for industrial companies very important. Um, they want to do now rollouts, the, the industry gets more familiar with AR, um, but it's, it's, uh, they, they usually a company is very fragmented, so uh, one department doesn't know what other department uh, do, and if you, if you kind of select that approach, uh, you, you can uh, structure everything a bit better. And uh, obviously the, the number of polygons you can visualize in the end is, is dependent on, on what you have on your servers. So uh, if you have a good graphic, uh, graphic power and, and this stuff, uh, then it's, it's usually very, very simple to do so. 
Uh, and last but not least, um, we experienced that you don't actually need a very high bandwidth to do so. Uh, we experienced that on a HoloLens, um, even five Mbit are enough to stream something. So uh, sometimes we go to customers and we just take our, our smartphone as a Wi-Fi hotspot um, to, to show the demo and stream something from a computer to a, Holo, to a HoloLens. Um, so that's, that's uh, very important. Um, the, the more field of view you have and all this stuff, yeah, probably the more uh, bandwidth you would need. Um, but this is not a big issue in, in our solution. Uh, we, we work together um, with Hubraum, that's the incubator of the Deutsche Telekom. Um, they have a really cool um, program um, which is related to edge computing and to 5G. Um, this, this new infrastructure of 5, 5G which is existing and, uh, and, and will be created in the next um, months and years is definitely supporting this approach. Um, edge computing the same. Um, it's basically an approach where you have local servers all around you and you can directly access them. This allows especially this low latency and this real-time rendering. So we work together um, also with them to, uh, to enable this infrastructure. I have one example. I, I, unfortunately, I cannot really show you some, some HoloView files because most of them are confidential and, and they don't want to, to give out the stuff. But here is one example um, that, we, that we did. Um, that's basically the, the International Space Station. That's a file with around 40 million polygons. Um, that's a, a live video capturing from um, the Microsoft HoloLens. And as you can see, it's, it's, it's running. Um, due to the live stream, there is a bit maybe more latency that you would expect it or, or than you would feel it in if you just really wear the glasses. But uh, it shows you that um, you can get actually a stable picture of a, of a real file. And uh, you don't need to, you, uh, you don't lose information, you don't lose details, you don't need to get all the screws out of a machine. You can go uh, like, you, like, you, like you go, and that's uh, basically uh, the big advantage of, uh, of this solution. Um, I wanna make two announcements. Um, one of them is actually that we have our remote rendering solution inside our HoloView already running. Um, it is available and that's uh, something we offer to our customers. Um, and this is, this is really great because uh, the workflow is much easier. Um, obviously at the moment we are not uh, dependent on a specific um, 3D CAD software, so uh, we don't have a direct uh, team center or a CRIO interface. You, you usually take the, the file that you exported from your software and you import it in our software. Um, that will be something we will probably work in the future on just to make the workflow even more smooth. Um, but what we also want to work and, and at and what we think, and, and now I want to come back to, my, to the beginning, we see that, that many, many companies out there have this issue. Um, it's not just the 3D CAD and the engineering environment. Um, if I do a project in AR, I, I have to handle this, um, this, this data. And um, if I have to invest time in optimizing all the time, usually my projects get expensive and, and, and this is really annoying. So that's why we want to, um, to, to allow others to, to also use this technology and will offer our own remote rendering API. This will be available in, in winter. Uh, and in case somebody of you is interested in, in, in this technology and want to test it, then uh, please get in touch with us at our booth. Um, as soon as we have something running, um, we're definitely looking also for companies uh, to test it, for other developers um, who can use it um, for, their own, um, for their own software development. And uh, yeah, I would be happy to talk with you about it afterwards. Yeah, uh, finally, I want to, uh, to, to show you what kind of relevance this whole topic has. Um, I think uh, if you visited AWE last year and, and this year, you've, you might have heard of the AR cloud, of this idea of the, a digital twin of the world. And this means you have to handle a lot of data. This means uh, that you actually have everything in 3D. And you can only render this stuff. Um, and that's the big question, where, where should I render this world? If you have the capabilities um, outside your glasses. Uh, in the future, smart glasses should look like my glasses too. They should be very light, they, there shouldn't be too much stuff around it. Um, but that means also that I don't have space for a computing power, that I don't have space for processor and all this stuff. So I need to go to a cloud. I need to render somewhere else. And, and we think that with our approach that we now can already use in, in an enterprise sector, we can also already offer this environment and by um, an emerging market in the 5G area, we will, can bring this also uh, to consumers. 
So this is not just um, a small use case uh, which is re related to this problem. Uh, we think that this is an essential um, challenge for the whole AR community. And uh, yeah, we would uh, be happy to, to bring in our technology here. And uh, I think uh, this is uh, definitely one way uh, to go. Yeah, that, that was it. I don't want to, to bother you too long. Um, if, you have, if you have questions, then I think there, there's still some time. Uh, and, and go ahead and, and ask me whatever you want. We are also at the booth 5 to 5. Um, that's uh, behind the third eye booth, a uh, very big one. And uh, you can talk to my colleagues or to myself. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>